Okay, so uh, Andrew Tate got banned from Facebook and Instagram. Now you're also probably thinking, why are you even covering this? Like this is a growth hacking slash marketing channel. Well, it turns out like two to three weeks ago, I actually did a video on him um, basically saying that he's a growth hacking OG, which honestly he is, right? I don't support the guy. I'm neither against him. I'm relatively indifferent to his existence. I see his content all the time, but I appreciate the ingenuity with regards to his marketing approach, how he's basically using an affiliate marketing system to push traffic to Hustlers University. It's really smart, right? Uh, what they build up, the scale of what they've built up as well is is pretty genius. If you're a marketer, you might be able to appreciate it. If you're not, if you're triggered by the misogynistic claims and the misogynistic comments that he does, okay, I, I understand that and I respect that too. But uh, Mr. Tate has managed to get himself banned from Facebook and Instagram, which... I don't know, it's sort of funny. It was also sort of expected. Like I had people warning me in the WhatsApp communities that it's only a matter of time until this guy gets banned. I didn't think it would be possible because I thought like, you know, the, the, there's been so much censorship conversation going on in the past couple of months that they would try to avoid that until he did something really stupid. But it turns out that they're backtracking on his content right now and finding stuff that he said before and banning him based on that, which, okay, it's their decision. Again, I'm personally against the level of censorship that we have at the current moment. But at the same time, I also understand like, you know, saying that women are responsible for being sexually abused, that's pretty stupid stuff. So I, I agree with that. I'm not for the guy. The only thing that I can appreciate is his marketing strategy and how he got viral. That's it. He's very, very controversial though. And I think it's done strategically because controversy is basically the catalyst, which is getting people to share his content, like his content, comment. And these are the key metrics that unfortunately social media platforms look at at the key moment. They don't look at, you know, if your content is good, if you're saying the right stuff, if you're, if you're saying that women deserve equality. No, this type of stuff doesn't really roll right now. It's primarily the controversy. It's you acting like an idiot. It's you saying stupid stuff, saying stuff that triggers people because that's the type of stuff that's going to get somebody to share something with a comment as well saying like, what the fuck is this guy on about? On the flip side though, he might also have people that support him and those people are basically liking, reacting, they're, 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 they're agreeing with the stuff that he's saying, etc. So he's polarizing, but I think he's strategically polarizing at the end of the day. I don't think he's a retard to actually mean 100% of the stuff that he's saying. I think a good portion, 40% of the stuff is just strategic bullshit that he's saying over and over again because he knows that it's gonna trigger you and it's gonna trigger me, it's gonna trigger everybody and we're gonna engage with it, we're gonna share it because that's just how social media works right now, right? Especially the short form content. So TikTok has basically caused YouTube and Instagram to start competing with TikTok because they're losing a lot of the share the audio, the attention share that they've had, right? So they rolled out shorts and reels, which is exactly the content format that his affiliate marketers from Hustlers University are currently writing on. They're basically repurposing Andrew Tate's long form content that he posted on, I think Tate Confidential a couple of months ago. They're repurposing that and they're essentially reposting it on the social media platforms and driving traffic back to Hustlers University. And that's my point. Even if they ban Tate from Facebook and Instagram, you won't stop seeing him on Facebook and Instagram. You'll still be seeing him for some months until and if they actually tweak the algorithms to remove everything with his face on it because it's still, it's mostly his affiliates pumping his content. I have not seen a single piece of content where it's actually Tate posting his own content. The only thing I'm seeing is actual affiliate marketers having a Hustlers University link where they get a 49% cut if I'm not mistaken pushing his content and driving traffic to Hustlers University. So they're gonna have to do a little bit more than just banning him from Facebook and Instagram, honestly. And we're gonna go over his reaction video as well because he actually reacted to the fact because he was on a live um, with a streamer. So Meta has banned influencer Andrew Tate from Facebook and Instagram for violating its policies. Former kickboxer rose to fame in 2016, removed from Big Brother show, etc. So a lot of people don't actually know that this guy was quote unquote riding in a low fame like since 2016. So before the time of TikTok. So th this is exactly what I'm saying. Like this guy has been on screens for time. He, it, it, he is str being strategically controversial. That's my whole point. It's not the first time he's on air, right? It's not the first time he's had a lot of attention brought to him. It's all played out. Uh, he went to gain notoriety online with Twitter banning him for saying women should bear responsibility for being sexually assaulted. 
4.7 million Instagram followers at the time that his account was removed. I, I think this is a, this could be a typo. That number had grown rapidly from around 1 million followers in June. He picked up like crazy in the past couple of months. Meta said that it removed the kickboxing star from its platforms for violating its policies on dangerous organizations and individuals, but did not provide further details. At the time of his removal from Big Brother, Mr. Tate said the video had been edited, calling it a total lie for trying to make me look bad. I think here he's referring to the video of where he was trying to beat a woman with a belt. He has not yet commented on the Metaban. He actually has, uh, but you guys wrote this two hours ago. Rolling Stones, though, actually, like, they, they try to rip him apart. Uh, you could get it right here. So, Andrew Tate, former kickboxer and semi-professional misogynist Andrew Tate. Semi-professional misogynist. That's pretty, uh, that, that's pretty harsh. Tate is well known for speaking about women, in particular violent and degrading terms, right? We all know that, that women should bear some responsibility for being raped and discussing. And so yeah, that, that's pretty retarded. Uh, saying that women should bear responsibility for being raped is pretty stupid. He has commented that he would threaten a woman with a machete and grip her by the neck if she ever accused him of cheating. Again, that's also pretty stupid. Stated that 18 and 9 year olds are more attractive than 25 year olds because they've been through less dick. Yeah. Um... I don't like honestly it, what he's saying is a problem but it's also the way that social media platforms work that's also a problem as well right because people are after views you don't necessarily get the views by saying the right thing by being the right person you get it from being controversial because those are just that's the strategy for getting the metrics on the content right i personally would never say this nor do i believe in this but I, what i'm trying to say is that guy is definitely being strategically controversial because he knows that it just makes the content marketing strategy go so much further. When we reached out for the comment, Tate said posts were made in jest, etc., aka joking. But the key thing is that, and this is why I think it's a, a, a I think it's it might be an issue for him. He hasn't been banned off TikTok yet, but there's an entire petition to get him banned, which you could see right here. So. <laughs> This, the signatures are going up by the minute. So Frog, whatever his name is, signed 43 minutes ago. Lauren Schick signed 54 seconds ago. Like if you refresh the page, you could basically see the active stream of people signing the petition right now. Uh, Taylor McLean signed four minutes ago. Kaylee Corn signed four minutes ago. It's, it's going up by the second. Uh, 84, 85, 86, 87, etc. So there's, there's definitely a lot of hate towards him. And I'm not too sure on whether his TikTok account will also be able to survive because TikTok has said that they're actively investigating his account at the moment to make a decision on whether they're going to ban him or not. Um, I think there might also be a counter petition from his actual supporters because I know he has a lot, uh, but I'm not sure on how far that's going to go. Here is his reaction to being banned. It wouldn't let me. I have good people in the case. I trust due process with Instagram. I'm actually quite understanding of their position. I do understand it very, very well. I'm not angry at them in any regard. Uh, it's not a big loss for me. It's not something I use too often. But I do understand their position because we're actually living in a world now where it's kind of strange. This is an unprecedented period of human history. And we have internet sensationalism, global sensationalism on a scale which has never happened before. And also we have the ability to edit things so quickly, right? So you can say something on a stream and they can remove all context or you can say something and they can change the tone of your voice or you can I've say seen, something. I, yeah, I've, it's already happened to me many times, yes. Exactly. And then what they can do is they can throw that in front of a hate mob and then internet sensationalism can take control and people can start to believe in narratives which are false and then people have to take some kind of action against that. So I understand all these things. I understand that with great power and great influence comes great responsibility. And I'm very understanding of the situation. I, I think that uh, I'm a strongly religious man. I believe that God will prevail. The truth will prevail. Right. The one, the one thing that's a little bit annoying, I mean, because a lot of people have been insulting me for a long time on all platforms. And that's fine. It really doesn't bother me because I'm an extremely strong person. I know that some people would be very, very uncomfortable in my position. Not many people can sleep at night with the kind of death threats I've been getting. But for me, it's been fine, right? You're getting death threats? Oh, yeah. I get to, And this is the thing that's crazy, right? So I would get ten to 20,000 death threats a day. What? Via Instagram. Via Instagram. And they, and they would take no action, even if I reported them. However, they've now decided I'm the danger. And even the people who were supporting <laughs> me, I was crazy. Crazy, yeah. I was saying, look, if you're going to support me in public... If 
So that's the video. I'm actually going to link it in the comments below so that you guys could check it out. As you can see, he's pretty chill. The reason as to why I think he's pretty chill is because, again, it's the affiliates. He, he, he doesn't care. Like the, the, the big accounts are essentially just a flex. They're not a necessity for Hustlers University. So it doesn't actually cut his revenue stream because the affiliates are doing most of the stuff. As I mentioned, for Facebook and Instagram to fully ban him or for TikTok to also fully ban him, they're going to have to tweak the algorithm so that whenever his face is on a video, that video automatically gets less views because right now TikTok is legit pumping with his content as are reels, as are shorts because of the short con short format content that's currently pumping right now. So uh, I don't know my personal comment. Does he deserve it for for those posts? He should have them removed, right? And he should have his account be penalized because if I went ahead and did that post right now, the content would likely be removed. If I did it on LinkedIn, if I did it on Facebook, it'd likely be removed and they tell me the content has been removed because it doesn't adhere to our content policy, etc. For his account to be fully removed, there's something more happening in the background. So yeah, uh, I don't stand by those comments, of course, 100% not. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm very interested in seeing how he's going to be able to uh, to continue. Uh, but again, personally speaking, I don't think it's going to damage him too much. The Rolling Stones, the BBC covering him right now is actually bringing him a lot more clout and a lot more traffic as opposed to uh, as opposed to before. Those are my thoughts. I've linked the reaction video in the comments below.